and welcome to the FinEd's YouTube channel. I'm Nidhan Najib, the FinEd's co-founder. Today we're going to be diving yet again into the ever so challenging topic of deferred taxes by discussing how temporary differences are created and how they are calculated. Now just a recap of our previous video in which we discussed the taxes that are paid out by a company to its tax authorities is calculated based on the company's taxable profits as reported on the tax statement, whereas the accounting profit before tax, as reported on the company's profit or loss statement, is calculated based on the application of accrual accounting rules. Now it is the difference in the application of these two set of rules, which often leads to a difference in taxable profits and further a difference in tax charges. Now my question to you all is, is this difference temporary or is it permanent? Let me walk you through an example to further understand this. Let's take the example of Alpha Company. Just now, I have a asset that has its cost of $300. Its asset has useful life of three years. Salvage value or residual value is zero dollars. Now, Alpha this asset could depreciate using the straight line method. Using all this information, we can easily calculate the annual depreciation charge and that equals to $100. Up tax authorities alpha ke depreciation calculation ko nahi mante. Instead, they calculate their own set of charges, which in tax terminology is referred to as capital allowances. The year-wise capital allowance over this three-year period has been calculated for you all as follows. Now, when you compare these two set of figures, you will immediately notice that the capital allowance is higher than the depreciation charge in the first two years. Let's see whether and how much Alpha's $300 asset is affected by the application of these two set of figures in number one, Alpha's statement of financial position and number two, Alpha's tax accounting records. Now, just to give you a heads up, the tax authorities refer to the carrying amount of the asset as the tax base of the asset. How is this tax base calculated? Well, you're simply going to be deducting the capital allowance from the beginning of year tax base to give you the end of year tax base. That's pretty simple. Let's head back. Looking at the table, you will notice each year there is a difference between the depreciation charge and capital allowance. You will also notice that the capital allowance is higher than the depreciation charge in the first two years. Furthermore, there is a clear reversal in trend in the third year such that the capital allowance is lower than the depreciation charge. This difference trickles down into a difference between the carrying amount of the asset and the tax base of the asset. Now this difference is only temporary. And why do I say this? Well, because that trend is reversing, this difference was only temporary to start off with. Each year, you will also notice a difference between the carrying amount of the asset and the tax base of the asset. This difference will give rise to a temporary difference, which will further on give rise to deferred taxes on Alpha's statement of financial position. Now, the next question of this video was, how are temporary differences calculated? You must always remember that this is simply calculated by taking the difference between the carrying amount of the asset and the tax base of the asset. We've actually done this calculation for you to make it a whole lot easier to visualize. I hope temporary differences are far more easier to understand. My next question to you all is, and I want you to take this home, is whether this temporary difference is taxable or permanent, number one. And number two, does it give rise to a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability? Please subscribe to the Finez YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Thank you.